Thanks for staying with us. Now, around the world, as well as in Africa, women's leadership and political participation are restricted. Women are underrepresented as voters as well as in leading positions, whether in elected offices, the civil service, the private sector, or academia. Corporate governance is a system of rules, policies, and practices that dictate how a company's board of directors manages and oversees the operations of a company. Corporate governance includes principles of transparency, accountability, and security. Key things we are in desperate need of in Africa today. So as we move towards 2023, how can we harness the untapped resources of women and change the leadership landscape in Africa and Nigeria? Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Before I bring in our guest, like in a minute or two, I was reading up something about women in positions of power. And it was quite <laughs> interesting how they say that when a woman, um, uh, when women hold positions of power, there's less corruption. <laughs> When I saw it, I said, ah, why there do I feel good with myself? <laughs> let me, but there are two ways okay, we can so actually let, let's look hear at you. it. Let me play the devil's advocate. You know, we've had issues of women, you know, you know, um, being in power mm -hmm. and being accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, they actually do the job very well compared to a man being on the job. But there have also been women who haven't actually delivered. Mm -hmm. I remember a one-time minister of um, petroleum who was a woman, I don't want to call names, that promised refineries <laughs> will be built. And today we are still at, um, at loss of having a refinery in mm. Nigeria. So women is relative. Let's say the ratio of women who are um, credible are more than the women who are not. Mm -hmm. So I would use that yastic to measure it. But this thing I've said is studies that have shown it all, mm. that the that increasing women's participation in leadership positions yes. actually decreases corruption. Dec as women are less mm -hmm. involved in bribery and are less likely to condone bribe taking. Like this I said. was a research that was done. So mm -hmm. why are we not taking advantage of the beautiful minds that we have in women you know pushing them into serious positions because now we're not just talking about corporate governance in terms of you know the the workplace and all of that we're also looking at it from the aspect of even even um, politics but not full mainstream electoral politics more of like for instance governing bodies like INEC right mm -hmm. why can't we have the head the body you know why can't we have Remember? push more women into those positions where they are mm -hmm. able to take their stand and stand for that position and make sure that they guard because those are sensitive um, bodies mm -hmm. that determines the future of, of, of leadership in Nigeria, for instance. Yes. You know, so why can't we have more women um, toe that line? Pushed. Well, we you can. Know, we can there. also look at it from this angle as well. We had a, a minister of um, NAVDAC mm. who Dora Quinley, Dora Quinley, who turned NAVDAC around mm -hmm. and everybody till date cannot forget her as the minister and the best minister ever mm -hmm. that Nigeria has, has ever had. You know, she basically. had zero tolerance. She was one that changed T the face of zero changed tolerance everything. for everything. You know, before before mm -hmm. Dora Queenly was um, Navdak DG, mm -hmm. um, they used to, in Kadnav Den, for instance, they used to yes. hawk, you know, they, they would hawk drugs on the, you on see the one of expired yes. drugs you know th that was when they, they had so many and people mm -hmm. were consuming these things exactly until she did war against all of those things and exactly. those things were eradicated exactly so i mean if we if we understand the power that a woman possessed mm -hmm. so instead of you know playing it down or mm -hmm. trying to do compensatory roles and all of that why can't we push ourselves you know to mainstream policy makers you know where we sit down on positions where we can push some certain kinds of policies that would be for the greater good of Nigeria or even mm -hmm. Africa. That you know is, what? Um, Let me. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that, I think that has a huge role to play with the society. Mm. The society plays a huge role and the cultural beliefs in that society also plays, plays a huge role. Mm -hmm. So if we look at it from that dimension, we can look at it like, oh, um, Nigeria as a country has not actually pushed 
the women or giving them that leeway is to only Nigeria? Let, I would like to hear from um, our guests if it's maybe yeah maybe. not only Nigeria yeah I would like but, to hear what uh, what's happening in Zambia mm. so Musuzio is a vibrant and brilliant award-winning professional mm. she is a chartered accountant by profession and she's currently the partner um, audit and assurance at HLB Zambia she mm. also serves as Africa's regional quality control reviewer and trainer for HLB member firms in Africa, reporting directly to HLB International Headquarters in London, uh, England. And she's joined us live from Zambia. Thank you, Suzio. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be a part of your program. I'm honored. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so Thank much. You. So Thank you. So you are a powerful woman, you know, making a lot of decisions <laughs> and changing a lot of policies. Let, let me start from, <laughs> you know, breaking down. How has, be, how has it been like for you, you know, attaining this level of authority that you command today, you know, as a woman? Mm. Well, I, I like to say it as uh, the journey has been more of like a roller coaster kind of a journey. I've had uh, my highs and I've had my low moments. I, I like to say it's not, it's not a very easy journey for women in the corporate world, but also I can't take away the fact that the highs have come from the support that I have received mm. from the men folk, the women and other leaders generally in the corporate world. Mm. So the highs have been there, they've been awesome. It's been a great journey. I've enjoyed a, a good journey in the corporate world. I've been around for 10 years plus now. And um, the lows, well, they, they come as well. <laughs> they do come as well. And yeah, you, you get to feel like just throwing in the towel, but it's been a roller coaster. But oh, in a nutshell, I would actually even say the highs have been more than the lows. Yeah. So what has been your, your, your biggest challenge in corporate governance? I personally, I, I like to say just self-belief has been because when I think about the era that we are in and the times that we are in, in terms of just women in leadership, for the longest time, women were fighting for inclusion and mm. equality uh, in leadership, in governance. And I like to say that in the, the times that we are in, that glass ceiling has literally been broken, yeah. I would say, by the many opportunities that are being offered for women in different sectors. When I think about many governments are now having deliberate orientational policies to have more women in their government, in positions of power, mm -hmm. in the corporate world alike, more and more uh, corporations are being intentional about giving opportunities to women to be in leadership. And I've lived most of my part in leadership being, being able to have those opportunities uh, presented to me, but having the confidence as a woman to go for it, to buy for it has been sort of a struggle because women have, I'm thinking about the age that I'm in, in terms of just my cloak. I am 33 years old. And this is a time when I'm in senior leadership, I am on corporate boards, and that demands a lot of my time. Mm. But it's also the same time that I have a young family. I'm bringing up little kids. I have a, a husband and, and expectations. Also being in Africa, the extended family expectations, exactly. they all kind of come in and were almost overwhelmed. Hmm. So having, and most of the times I find myself feeling guilty for pushing myself and letting myself be out there and give my very best. Hmm. Many times I'm driving home late because I had meetings, I had strategies to complete and reports to complete. And I'm thinking my children are already in bed, who saved my husband and as an African wife, the guilt really weighs me, weighs me down and it overwhelms me. And you know, thinking of when you are a leader, there's criticism that also comes with lead, with leadership. Exactly. You have to be held accountable for your decisions. And naturally, as a woman, I like to be, to be cheered on more, to be mm -hmm. applauded more than I want to take on the responsibility and and being accountable for my decisions. Sometimes the criticism comes in really harsh and negative, 
And I feel like I'm not wired for that. And those are the many times that I just want to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. I feel like the men folk are more um, thick skinned for the criticism that comes from being a leader. But as a woman, I feel like it's a personal attack. So I've had to overcome self, obviously, in terms of just my own guilt with managing and trying to balance being a leader in the corporate world, in corporate um, entities at home and all. And also just learning to grow attributes of a leader to actually just rise up and know that I am able to actually take on, to be accountable and all that comes with it. Okay, so, so it's interesting what you're saying because mm -hmm. um, it just got me thinking because people are asking, why are we talking about, why do we need more women to participate mm -hmm. in positions of authority, positions of governance and all of that? Mm -hmm. Is this not the the number one reason because as a woman you understand the structure of how a woman is wired and how she thinks about every single person i mean i have had to turn down a job many 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 years ago i think about 14 years ago over half a million i was being paid you know monthly for i mean by now it would have grown very well i had to shut it down because i was raising my children young children at that point you know i couldn't I couldn't for the life of me understand how I was going to balance that demanding because I had to leave 5 a.m., come back 11 p.m. at mm -hmm. night. There was no time. You know, my children were distant from me. So it's, because people are asking, why are we talking about why we need more women? If we have more women at the positions where decisions are being taken, mm -hmm. a woman understands the struggle of another woman, right? And the woman will say, you know what? Mm -hmm. This thing, this policy has to be twisted in this manner so that it can fit the lifestyle of a woman that wants to still be corporate at the same time raise her family, you know? So if you are to, you know, give like a blanket um, structure of what um, um, leadership should look like, corporate governance should look like for women, you know, what should you be advising? Maybe companies... Uh, uh, governance, you know, who should be more <laughs> at the seat of power if you were going to give a recommendation? Don't let the men come for you. <laughs> well, I, I totally agree with you that women by nature make good leaders, great leaders, if I must add, because not just by nature, women are, are natural. So women tend to want, I'll, I'll tell you that when I'm in a certain position or I have a task or just a woman um, leading a company, we take, in, we take on that company or that task like a baby. So we treat that company, we want to actually nature, you want to make sure that it's well taken care of and that it grows because we are natures that, natures that want to see growth. And I believe that is a powerful attribute of women that, that we take actually to the table. That is the value that we take to the table. We don't necessarily have to even twist ourselves to be more like men, but our very nature, I think about our ability to multitask. Like you indicated you were juggling between family and, 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 your, and your job. And that is the natural ability of women. We are multitasking. Many times I can multitask between different departments in in our organization because it comes natural to me i'm thinking about operations and the next i'm thinking about administrative issues so i like to say women actually make very good ceo because what is the good what is a, an attribute of us what makes a, a good ceo is an ability to actually multitask which comes natural with women when i think about our nature also as a women as a woman i heard you earlier on in the show you were talking about uh, when women are in positions of power, there's less corruption. That actually comes natural because women are naturally fearful of even just going to jail. When you think about uh, being arrested for corruption or taking on a bribe, naturally as women, we always feel like we've got more to lose. Because at that point, you're thinking, if I go to jail for corruption, my children have to suffer. And there's exactly. a lot, whole lot more people that will actually have to face um, the consequences of my actions. Mm -hmm. So naturally, you, women also are always thinking about the next person. We want to make sure that everybody is okay. Mm -hmm. So when in an organization, you are not thinking of just self. Many times for women that are in leadership, they believe that the strategy will be beyond money. 
they will be thinking about all stakeholders in that particular entity, mm -hmm. be it a governance, a, gover a government institution, a corporate institution that whose main aim is profit. For a woman, it will be beyond profit. When you think about strategies for a woman, you're thinking of ma making sure that all stakeholders are taken care of. Mm -hmm. Now, which company doesn't want to have somebody that ensures that all stakeholders are satisfied, <laughs> the employees should be satisfied, the customer, a woman will always want to put a, a, the best foot forward for a customer to make sure that they are happy, they are satisfied. So naturally, what women bring to the table, our very nature of how God created us is actually uh, uh, it's actually a value for organization. Mm. It's, a va it's actually value for governance, for systems, for entities out there. Absolutely. Totally. I agree with you 100%, but also in Nigeria, you see, we women in Nigeria, we are wonderful. Also in Nigeria is where I saw a woman who said that um, snakes swallowed money. So let's, <laughs> but that's another topic for, uh, that's a topic for another day. Um, now, my question mm -hmm. to you is this. Now we have women in, in position. We have women in position of power, right? And they have uh, the mm -hmm. opportunity to, to opportunities to actually give um, some sort of policy or, or, or change policies, basically. So how do we sustain women in, uh, pas women's participation in uh, corporate governance? Well, I believe that... Um when you think about supporting, you know, there's a notion which I don't normally even like to mention it about women are always fighting each other. For some reason, uh, the, the many times that I felt as attacked in terms of even just the questioning of my decisions, yes. it has come more from the, my fellow women than from the men folk. I believe one of the strides that we need to really put our best foot forward as women is cheering each other on supporting each other you know when you think about because even now that women are being appointed in positions of influence or positions of power it's the way it's the, now the question is coming to say is she qualified it shouldn't be about filling positions is she capable is she skilled but rarely do i hear those questions go out for a man's appointment <laughs> when a man is appointed everybody cheers and we make the assumption that they have the necessary experience exactly. they have the skill and they're capable but why should we begin to question when we hear of a woman's appointment, mm. we begin to question, is she qualified? I mean, for someone to receive an appointment, there's a whole process that they've obviously gone through. Mm. But we want to raise eyebrows for women more than we do. But then I believe that we need to get to a point where we have a trust for women in leadership that will sustain their appointments or their elections, because sometimes women have to be elected. But when you, when you hear of a woman who's been nominated, for an election, whether it's for a public office or even a private office, many times everybody wants to now begin to ask even their private uh, life, they want to begin to investigate their private life. You want to begin to invest, investigate where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. But for the male folk, it's about the delivery, the manifesto that they're bringing to the table right there and then. <laughs> so I want to believe that we, we need to get to a place where we begin to trust and believe that, yes, women are also, we have it, enough women that are educated. Mm -hmm. We have enough women that are experienced. We have enough women that are capable. Many women that have been in positions of power, they have proved to be capable. Mm -hmm. They have proved to be great leaders. So why should we always have a question in mind? I want to say that to sustain women in leadership, we need to have a trust that just like we believe and trust that a man president can take a country forward, a female president is well able. If she's been nominated, elected, or appointed, I believe she's already gone through the process of being, uh, um, being able to prove that she's highly capable and skilled enough to actually deliver. Mm. So we need to have more trust in women. We need to cheer each other on as women as well. And we need to deliver. Once we have those positions of power as women, we should not take it for granted that now uh, positions have to be filled, whether it's 50-50 intentionality for women positions. We have to come on and redeem the time and be able to deliver, to be able to uh, welcome criticism, positive and negative criticism, be able to be, uh, to be available, to be held accountable, mm -hmm. and to also just ensure our integrity and perform. Absolutely. I believe that will certainly sustain our positions in leadership. Absolutely. I like the fact that you said we must trust. Yeah. 
um, you know, the truth is, um, the reason it seems like we criticize every woman that is in a position of authority is because we actually have very few of them. You know, you have so many men. But once a woman is amongst them, she stands out. So you are, all eyes will be on her, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody will be watching her mm -hmm. every move. Of course, there are many men that have made mistakes. They've stolen money. They've been corrupt and all of that. We don't point fingers at them. But it, once a woman does it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you're, we but are God actually quick. Men. Yes, we're actually quick. But, I mean, the people that are in positions of power, they are much more than us, you know. So, I mean, in terms of men, numbers, in terms of gender, I mean, they are much more than us. How come we do mm -hmm. not point those fingers at them? You know, so I, I like that. I like what you said. Um, people would ask, why, why do we need power? We need power for three things. Authority, influence, and responsibility. And without those three things, you can't move any system forward. But you know what? We're going to take a very short break. When we return, we're going to continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 